All right, now that we got the Evo safe and sound to TPG, it's time to get started on some wiring related activity for the K24. And uh, we're gonna dive into that right now. So let's get started. What's up everybody? Just got off of work and came out to dad's and decided to do some work in the shop. And uh, I got a couple of things done in the engine tonight that I wanna share with you guys. Some things are some, uh, you know, if you're doing a K20, K24, Frankenstein engine swap kind of deal, um, some of this might be useful for you. And then I'm going to go over some things I'm doing special for my engine directly. So let's talk about them real quick. So as you can see, this engine has changed a little bit since the last video. I got the uh, brake and EVAP bracket on there. The, the little two pipes along the side of the head cover. I obviously have the RBC manifold on there. I'm still using the TSX throttle body. And then I modified the... Uh, coolant outlet on the side of the head there. I don't know what that thing's part name is, but anyway, let's talk about the K20 and K24 swap stuff. So starting off the Cintiq manifold, the head sits about 17 millimeters higher on this block. Don't quote me on that actual number, but basically it lifts the intake manifold up in relation to the bottom of the block. So, so if you set that uh, intake manifold stiffener bracket all the way up against the intake as if it's torqued, we're not even close to this bolt on here. And it makes it tough to use that. You'd have to get a spacer or a longer bolt, some other stuff. Not worth it. This intake will be just fine without it. That was a durability thing. So if we can get rid of that. The uh, research pipe right there mates up just fine to the thermostat housing, the bottom of the intake manifold. And then uh, let's talk about the thermostat housing while we're down here. That is gonna end up getting plugged because that is the heater return from the heater core. I no longer have that. So there's a plug from hybrid racing that goes in there with a little bracket from that bolt that goes over it to hold it in super simple now as far as the heater send let's get into that this is the hot side of the heater core the feed and i don't have the heater core again so basically what i did is i wrestled the uh, steel insert pipe out of there this guy it was similar to that much bigger um, i crushed it wrestled it out of there it came out nice and clean no big deal and then i drilled that out to just under 19 millimeters and threaded it by an m20 by one uh one millimeter tap now Turns out this is M20 by one, which is exactly why I drilled it like that. This is the rocker bar cap for the B series heads, the VTEX. That guy will thread right in there with a crush washer, seal off any coolant pressure behind it. No big deal. All's well, no more heater. Perfect. Now, same thing goes for this guy here. This feeds a, a warm coolant to the throttle body and heats it up. And I think it went to something else down here, but I don't remember what it was. No big deal. Don't need that either. Plenty of hot air coming from the turbo. So I drilled that. I took the nipple out of that, drilled it out to nine millimeters or something around there, just under nine millimeters, threaded it with an M10 by 125 tap, ran a bolt in, no big deal. So deleted that as well. Now, some of the wiring stuff here. This is all going to seem pretty simple now. It is fairly complex, but I want to explain it. As you can see here, I've got a CMPA sensor in the B slot. So this was CMPA, CMPB, and then I had the ECT sensor. All three of these are going to run to the same connector, which is kind of cool because you don't typically replace these. You might, but if you do, it's, it's really, you know, few and far between, whereas coil packs are more common. So they will actually have a connector that snaps onto them so I can take them out and get them off really easily individually. Well, whereas these guys, you don't typically replace them. So I'm not as concerned about having a connector on them. So I will show why this looks like this when we get back to the wiring shop. But the idea is one single eight pin connector. So I will have a three pin, three pin, and a two pin. So CMPA, CMPB, and then ECT. Now, this is actually a CMPA sensor, shoots straight out, and then CMPB, I lied. This is actually a CMPB sensor to clear this, and then CMPA shot straight up and looped around. And I had to cut a bracket off right here for EVAP, and that will allow this harness to come out. It was interfering with it right here. It'll come out, and it will run up into here and be hidden. So what you can see of it will look really nice, and then it will immediately disappear and hide. I will be getting the two liter IV tech cover for the intake manifold and then I will pop the 2.4 liter um, off of the cover that came with this and put it on there and then I will hide all the wiring from the map sensor and the uh, throttle motor under here along with all the injectors. It'll still look super nice but it'll be covered up have a nice clean look. So as far as that goes I'm going to pop this uh, VTC actuator off. When we get back to the house I'll test it make sure it's all good and then we'll pop the rest of these connectors 
and we'll start uh, making these sub harnesses everywhere. And I'll go through the Excel document I made on how to uh, how I'm going to run all these to, I call these clusters. I'm sure they have an actual name, but uh, clusters is what I like to call them, where you're kind of clustering things together. It's probably just called a junction or a breakout, but that's the idea. Let's go back to the house and start working on it. So I just pulled these two things out of here and I thought I'd share this bracket. It's actually pretty simple. Deutsch makes them. They're, they're cents a piece. I'm not sure exactly how much. I think they're like 80 cents a piece maybe. And then I just drill them out to a 3 8 hole so that way a Honda rotor screw sits pretty flush up against it. Looks pretty clean when it's off. Super flat up against the engine. Nice and tidy. Figured that was worth sharing before I took off. Okay, so laid out here on the table is a bunch of things I'm going to use to try and explain my theory and my path moving forward with the K24's harness. So we're going to start with this D16 junk throttle body that I had laying around. And you'll be able to see here that I have, this is an old version here, so it's not exactly correct or up to technically mil spec, quote unquote, but uh, these, these guys here will. So with that being said, you can see here that I put pins on all of these wires and then put them on the uh, pins of the actual sensor and then put a potting compound in there called RT125. Then you put a service loop on them so that it relieves strain on the uh, actual exit of the epoxy. And then that will run to what I'm calling like a cluster or like a community connector. Then what you do is you just put some uh, adhesive line shrink wrap on top of it and that should seal it. Now again, these were just test parts. They aren't anything special and they weren't intended to work. They were just kind of a uh, play around part. Now, this one here, this is CMPB off of a K-series and this is off of a junk engine that we had laying around. And you can see that I had to kind of step down the adhesive here because this adhesive that fits around the connector doesn't fit around the, R the uh, DR25 shrink wrap. So I had to step that down. Not super pleased with how it looked. I'm going to try a different uh, method to see if I can get it to shrink down in one shot, but chances are I'm going to have to do this on any three pin connector. The two pins will probably work out, but um, that is a test part. I'm going to try one more test part. I'm going to make this one look like this one and show you guys how I did it because this is another CMPB. These are CMPAs, which is the intake cam sensor uh, position sensor. So these guys um, actually are, even though they look different, are exactly the same sensor. So the only thing that's different really is the connector body. So I'm going to uh, use two of these because they will end up, I'm sorry, I'm using two of these because they will end up looking cleaner than these guys will, but these will be a decent spare should I ever need one. So I may do them as well. Now, this is the VTC actuator. This controls the oil flow to the intake cam phaser to change its position relative to the timing of the engine real time while it's running. Let's see if that'll stay sitting up. And then this is your VTS and VTP. So VTS is the VTEC solenoid, and then VTP is the VTEC pressure switch. So it would, I believe, don't quote me, break a ground when there is enough oil pressure in this body to run the VTEC system. And then over here, I have a new NOx sensor, however, I don't believe I'm going to be using a factory knock sensor. I think I'm going to be using a wide band from ECU Master. And then there is a already modified ECT uh, sensor that I clearly bit with the soldering iron, so I won't be using that. Now, the harness of this car will be something very similar to what I made for the steering wheel for our race car. I'm not sure why the phone's not focusing. There we go. So it'll be very similar to that. And inside of this, there are, I believe, 11 wires. So there should be seven here, and then I have four filler wire in there. And this is an extremely small piece of equipment, and there are 11 wires in it. And you can see the gray filler wires right there. So those gray wires are actually filler wires. They're only there to make this uniform so that it contrawinds correctly. Now, the core should always be right hand lay, so twisted clockwise, and then your next layer should be six wires more if they're all the same size, and it should be a left hand lay, and then six more right hand lay, and you just keep going until you've run out of wires. But if you run out of wires and you don't have a full layer, you use filler wire. We'll get into all that, but for now, I'm gonna start playing around with this connector and show you guys how I did this in a time lapse video.
All right, so I got a pretty decent amount of work done. Um, it's not easy to do this, but it is, uh, it is gonna end up being nice in the end, and I'm gonna explain a couple things about why I'm doing it like this to begin with. But first, we have a crank position sensor, the exhaust cam position sensor, engine coolant temperature sensor, the VTC control solenoid, and the uh, VTEC solenoid block, and we are not gonna be using VTP. I will have an oil pressure sensor on it. I don't care if the oil pressure is high enough at this point because I know it will be high enough at the oil pump exit. Now, what we're gonna do is take all of these areas, these cavities where these are, and we're going to fill it with Resentech RT125. We're gonna put it in this uh, suspicious looking applicator and we're gonna fill all these up and it's gotta dry for about 24 hours. So I'll find a plug to plug this and then also the knock sensor that I brought up earlier. That uh, can't be done right now because it needs a shielded wire. That is a wire that has um, your conductor and then a, an insulator, like a regular wire, and then it's got a braided steel jacket on the outside of it that gets grounded to the engine's G101, the main ground at the engine, and then an outer insulator. So it's uh, shielded from EMP pulse from outlets, um, I'm sorry, outputs like coils, injectors, stuff like that. So next step, get this uh, potted up and then we will mark the wires with these guys, similar to this, which takes a gray wire and turns it into a yellow black or a um, brown yellow or green. And any combination of those colors that you choose. I will be going with the factory wiring schematic, but we'll get to that after we pot these up. I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back in 24 hours and see where we're at. in the wiring room and I got a boost control solenoid right here I'm not sure if I'm gonna work on this yet I need to do a little bit more planning but I got it out just some Chinese solenoid so I'll need to make that easy to replace because I guarantee that won't last now got these things all ready to go wires are color-coded they are twisted they are looped they are potted everything is ready to go for the insulation so let's do a uh, time-lapse of the insulation going on and then after that, I will add the SCL to seal it, and then we'll go from there. Let's rock. turned out perfect but they are pretty well mill spec and they do look pretty good they're well supported they're sealed they are handmade so perfection is not to be expected however I think they're gonna work really well in the car and function even better so I think the next steps to get them out on the engine see how they all fit and start buying some connectors <laughs> <laughs> 